Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Thanks so much for meeting with me and R. That's my pleasure. Um, I wanted to let our audience know that uh, we know each other, we're friends. We met what I believe is now a decade ago in your motherland in Azerbaijan. And um, you were kind enough to discuss the traumatic events of your life, um, uh, specifically related to Kojale and the ensuing years of being an internally displaced person. And so I thank you for your time then and now. Um, would you ever have thought we'd be sitting here discussing Armenia's capitulation and the um, victory for Azerbaijan? Did that ever seem possible? First of all, uh, Sandra, that's my pleasure uh, uh, getting to know you. Uh, it's a decade ago. It seems like we met yesterday. <laughs> as a so fast it's unbelievable uh, regarding the second part of your question uh, my very very close friend of me uh, three months ago I don't know three months probably I may be wrong regarding the time mm -hmm. a couple months ago she's a Swiss journalist Mm -hmm. She works in public radio. She told me, she called me, and then she asked, she told me that she was planning to visit to <clears throat> Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan and Armenia from Georgia. And make, she wants to make a documentary about Nagorno-Karabakh, specifically about my home where I was born. And then uh, she wants to... Uh, have this documentary on her, on her public radio in Switzerland. So she went to Azerbaijan, she met my family, and then um, after that she tried to, she came to Georgia because through Georgia she, you can uh, go to Armenia and from Armenia she went to Nagorno-Karabakh, but she got permission from Minister of Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan. She let them know that she's planning to visit to Nagorno-Karabakh. And she did a good job by sending me some pictures of my city. My, she, she, she was not permitted to go a little visit to the house I was born because wherever she used to go, there was always. On that line as well, in terms of Turkey, um, how do you feel about Turkey's support? I mean, they were um, a pretty big player you know, related to uh, the drone warfare. Turkey has, you know, historical roots with Azerbaijan mm -hmm. in terms of culture, in terms of religion, in terms of uh, <clears throat> ethnical uh, uh, similarities. Mm -hmm. So Turkey always, uh, Turkey is an active player, not only the South Caucasus region, but in other <clears throat> locations of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, specifically this war, Turkey's role uh, was very crucial in terms of uh, uh, preventing Russians uh, directly interfere in, in, a, in a war between two countries, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was kind of uh, counter, counter uh, force against the Russian force in the region. Uh, and uh, Turkey's support in terms of logistic support, uh, uh, in terms of, I don't know, support, like moral support, was very crucial for Azerbaijan. Uh, to gain some advantage during the military operations. And because of that, despite the allegations, despite the allegations that the Turkish uh, military somehow involved in the, in, a, in the military operations, there is no 
there's no like uh, tangible facts proving this evidence. Uh, but Turkey's and you know, Azerbaijani uh, military officials, uh, Azerbaijani soldiers, Azerbaijani military academy, you know, graduates, mm -hmm. trained by Turkish uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, specialists for many years. And uh, that was really helpful during the military operations. Mm -hmm. From that perspective, Turkey played a very active role. And uh, Turkey also kept its borders like for 30 years closed with Armenia. Mm -hmm. It's another very important factor taking the Nagorno-Karabakh invasion into the consideration. Um, during the 44 day war, what was your contact like with family? How you know, much were you able to keep in touch with them during this time? My family actually they live uh, very close to the borderline in the Garda region. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when the war started, the uh, Azerbaijani government, they cut uh, internet connections mm -hmm. with outside because of the, some objective reasons. Uh, I couldn't keep in touch with them. Mm -hmm. So I was actually on daily basis through internet, uh, keep, was keeping in touch with my father and mother. But when the war started, I couldn't. And then I tried to reach my brother by calling him and asking about uh, my family's, you know, mm -hmm condition my father my, my brother also lives like almost 400 kilometers away from Barra in Baku mm -hmm. and then he was he was calling also my family and he was giving me information uh, the city where they live uh, was bombed bombarded mm -hmm. shelled by military uh, rocket missiles and a lot of casualties, I think 30 people died just in Barada region. And some of those missiles hit uh, our neighborhood. And uh, I was very anxious, I was very nervous because it reminded us, you know, the first Nagorno-Karabakh war in 1992, where we were directly involved in the biggest ethnic cleansing happened, the city I was born in, Hojala. So we started thinking about those those days, like 30 years ago, you start living the same uh, life, same, uh, um, you, start, uh, you start having the same feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, some people died in our neighborhood, a uh, lot of uh, damage to the buildings, but thanks God nothing happened to our house where my family lived. But all my aunties, my uncles who live like next to the borderline, Artem, they ran from their village and they came to live together with us in Barda. Mm -hmm. Because they had nowhere to go. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what happened. So do you feel like during that 44 day war, your headspace um, at times was really in the past? Yeah. Like relive, reliving what you had been through, and I imagine it brought that up for you. Yeah. Um, when speaking of when you when you consider your your life's path, you know you had um, a traumatic childhood that you could say your childhood was was stolen due to war, um, you know, the loss of your homeland. Uh, decades later, you have this possibility of returning. Uh, how, how are you feeling about that? Actually, we, we still, uh, we, though, I don't know if you know, like uh, all the Azerbaijani regions around Nagorno-Karabakh were liberated. Yeah. Nagorno-Karabakh itself, there are like uh, two biggest Azerbaijani majority populated cities, mm -hmm. Hojala and uh, Hojavend. Hoja uh, the city center was not liberated, but some villages were, were liberated. 
Bahojala city is still under uh, Armenian control. Mm -hmm. So I cannot fully claim that, you know, now I have a right to return because I am still, uh, I'm still like uh, in a limbo. Mm -hmm. you know? So, but I can understand, I'm very happy, grateful that uh, some of our distant relatives who used to live uh, in the adjacent neighborhoods, Nagorno-Karabakh, now they have a chance to return. And when I see them happy, you know, it makes me happy. It gives me hopes that, you know, one day I will also be very happy, like those guys, and will return to Khojala. And Khojala's location is very unique because it's, it's located all like among Armenian settlements. So very, very tough uh, strategic location. Mm -hmm. So if we return there, I'm sure there is like uh, stipulations on the agreement that all IDPs and refugees, they have to return to their homelands. But when it will take place, I don't know. Right. Yeah, there's so much to be rebuilt with the infrastructure. Yeah, so much to do. So it's too early. Yeah. But I'm happy for my other country, fellow men. When you see those, I'm, I'm sure you have also seen it. You have lived in Baku, you have known, you have seen how they, which kind of circumstances they live under. So now, when you see the happiness on their faces, it makes you feel happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, can you describe how you felt after you learned that uh, Azerbaijan took back the fortress city of Shusha? I mean, Shusha was historically Azerbaijani city. Majority always like was Azerbaijanis living in Shusha. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the same exact positive feelings when Azerbaijanis. Uh, return liberated uh, the first city like Fizuli, the same feeling. Even though one village, it doesn't matter, was liberated, I was more than like joyful mm -hmm. to celebrate it because after 30 years waiting, many people passed away waiting for this day. Mm -hmm. Many people like they were just like living, you cannot you cannot understand how it feels to live in, die in an exile, you know. So many people waited for this, this and those who saw the liberation actually were the luckiest ones. And I consider my, despite my city still like under uh, Armenian control, I still consider myself one of those lucky, you know, survivors yeah. of the massacre. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I, I'm just wondering if um, the immense joy you might be feeling in, you know, this um, current situation with Azerbaijan and Armenia, um, if there is also um, a sense of grief or some other emotion because lives have been lost and you, you were dedicating, you know, your life to trying to find a peaceful resolution. Yes. Uh, I mean, you were together with me when I had some meetings with our Armenian counterparts you know, in Georgia regarding the peace, um, what you call it, initiatives or peace memorandum mm -hmm. in Georgia. And uh, through the international organizations, they were trying to find, they trying to develop the, this uh, mediators, they were trying to uh, involved, get involved. Um, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> what you like? Positive uh, thinking mm -hmm. or positive oriented, peaceful oriented uh, segments of both societies. Mm -hmm. From Armenia, they were finding writers, scientists, politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, from Azerbaijani side, also, like, who can be influential in terms of the 
power, the power from the society so that those guys can find a peaceful solution mm -hmm. to the problem. But I don't know how much funding during these 30 years, European Union, European uh, Council, United States, other organizations, United Nations, they spend on this peaceful, uh, on this uh, organizations, you know, bring those, bring, conf bring conflict inside together. But at the end, uh, it didn't give a result. Otherwise, we, 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 we don't have the second Karabakh war. I hope we didn't take lesson from the first one. We we'll take lesson from the second one. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't let this third Nagorno Karabakh war happen in the future. Otherwise, it will be a vicious circle. Just go on and on and on in the future, and the future generations are going to suffer. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if you answered what was my first question about uh, you imagining this were to ever be a possibility. Possibility of bringing to have to have one back some of the regions. I was actually, to be honest with you, I never imagined. Yeah, it was totally unexpected. I was like thinking it's gonna be like some conflicts in the Middle East or some mm -hmm. conflicts in you know, some parts of the world. So just, you know, after 30 years, you lose your hope. So that was normal. Yeah. yeah. Is there um, anything that I didn't cover that you would like to share with the Azerbaijani community? Uh, I would like to actually thank to the Azerbaijani community for the for their support and understanding during this, all this war. Uh, and uh, I want them to just keep their solidarity and uh, be more united uh, when, very, uh, when it comes uh, to the problems of our homeland Azerbaijan. And uh, I wish that all Azerbaijanis, uh, especially in Azerbaijan, they find uh, a peaceful uh, way of living or coexisting with their, their neighbors, Armenians, mm -hmm. living in harmony and peace. Yes. They will live there for forever. We will live there for forever. There's, they're not gonna get away, run away from this region. We will not run away. So somehow we have to find the way to live together. That's what I wish. And also thank you for uh, organizing and asking uh, these very interesting questions. I'm very grateful. You are so welcome. It is my pleasure. I'm so grateful that you are well and your family as well. And I'm. Um, Happy for Azerbaijan. So thank you for your time tonight, Anar. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Appreciate it. Okay, good night.